हेलो गाइस हाउ आर यू आई एम हरदीप सिंह वेलकम बैक टू योर ओन यूट्यूब चैनल आल्स अपडेट्स एंड रीसेंट एग्जाम्स फॉर मोर अपडेट्स रिलेटेड टू रीसेंट आल्स एग्जाम राइटिंग दस टॉपिक्स लिस्टनिंग रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट एंड स्पीकिंग क्यू कट गेस वर्क प्लीज गाइस पार्टिसिपेट इन एवरी डे लिस्टनिंग एंड रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट टू अचीव योर डिजायर बैंड स्कोर इन योर एक्चुअल आल्स एग्जाम Please hit the like and subscribe button. Press the bell icon for the upcoming notifications. Don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page Alts updates and recent exams. Part 1. You are going to hear a news broadcast about proposed developments in a local area and about a local college. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. Listen carefully and decide which four planned developments are mentioned. And now for our main headlines on Southern Local News for today. First of all, the report relating to the proposed motorway and other developments around the village of Tartlesbury was published this morning, and as has been expected, it has created quite a lot of interest. The new motorway will pass along the north side of the village. crossing the river team less than half a kilometer from the well-known beauty spot Streve Ford to the northeast of the village the motorway will cut the village off from the ford where many children play but that is not the end of it there are also plans to build a thousand houses on farmland west of the village and on top of that there are proposals to build an industrial estate for new technology companies on the site of the old steelworks on the edge of the village a new center with a swimming pool and a very wide range of sports facilities and a large supermarket with other shops are also planned next to the housing estate before you hear the rest of the conversation you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10 Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. Mr Jones, a local farmer we spoke to early today, is strongly against the plans. But the local council is pushing for them to be adopted in full. They say that new housing is needed in the area and that it is an opportunity to take advantage of government grants for setting up new technology developments. The mayor, Mr Fun, says We must make every effort to do our part for the economy of the country and for the local people. This is a golden opportunity to put Tartlesbury on the map. Reactions to Mr Fun's comments have been quick to come. Surprisingly, when we contacted the spokesman of the local conservation group, he was very much for the planned developments. But not all the local groups support the scheme. and unlike the mayor the local mp mrs wright is very much against the planned developments mr khan a local shopkeeper had this to say people are absolutely horrified at what is being proposed here this is just a chance for some people to make money quickly but i can assure you that if they think that local people are going to be a walkover they have another think coming of course We welcome the jobs that the new technology park will bring, but we feel that the large increase in housing and the proposed motorway will destroy the character of the area. I think this is a debate that is going to run on for quite some time, and we here on local news will keep you informed. 
and now for something quite different. This year's exam results have just come out, and there are a lot of happy faces out there. It would seem that the number of young people going on to university from the local college in Upton, which is not far from Tartlesbury, has increased by 25% this year. All those who have applied to go to university or into teacher training colleges have found places. This is the first time that there has been a 100% success rate at the college. We spoke earlier to the principal of the college, who said she was very proud of all those who had achieved their aims and she wished them every success in the future. There will be another news bulletin at 11pm. And for now, it's back to more music from around the world. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. You'll hear two students discussing a survey they have to write as an assignment. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. How is your market research project going, George? Very well, actually, Anna. I've just got the results of the survey back, and so now I have to draw some conclusions from the information I've collected. That's good. I'm still writing my questionnaire. In fact, I'm starting to panic, as the project deadline is in two weeks, and I don't seem to be making any progress at all. What is your topic? Forms of transportation in the city. What about you? I've been finding out people's attitudes to the amount of violence on television. That's interesting. What do your results show? Well, as I said, I haven't finished writing my conclusions yet, but it seems most people think there is a problem. Unfortunately, there is no real agreement on the action that needs to be taken. Nearly everyone surveyed said that there was too much violence on TV. A lot of people complain that American police serials and Chinese kung fu films are particularly violent. The main objection seems to be that, although a lot of people get shot, stabbed, decapitated and so on, films never show the consequences of this violence. Although people die and get horribly injured, nobody seems to suffer or live with the injuries. Any children watching might take the heroes of these programmes as role models and copy their behaviour. So, what did most people suggest should be done? A lot of people were concerned about how these films affect children. They are particularly worried that children will try to behave like the stars. The survey shows that violent programmes should be broadcast after 10pm, when most children are already in bed. There is also a significant minority of people who feel that violent films should be banned altogether. Or well, how did people feel about the violence on news broadcasts? Most of the responses I have looked at have felt that violence on news broadcasts is more acceptable, as it's real. Although it's unpleasant, it is important to keep in touch with reality. Still many people thought that it would be better to restrict violent scenes to late viewing. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20.
Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Your survey sounds very good. How many people filled it in? I gave out 120 and I got 70 back. That's a very high rate of return. Who did you give your questionnaires to? I gave a copy to every student in my hall of residence and a few to friends from other colleges. Don't you think that this will influence your results? How do you mean? The people in your hall of residence are all about the same age. They're all students and from similar backgrounds. Therefore, it is likely that they will have similar opinions. Your results represent student opinion, not public opinion. So how are you going to do your research? Well, I'm going to interview my respondents in the shopping mall. What I'll do is ask people if they have five minutes to spare to answer a few questions. If they agree, I will ask them some multiple choice questions and tick off their answers on my sheet. Isn't it very difficult to ask meaningful questions using multiple choice? Yes, it is. The secret to writing a successful survey is to write simple multiple choice questions that target the information you're looking for. There. It's better to write a lot of short, specific questions than longer general ones. So that's why it is taking you so long to write. Yeah, but I hope I'll be ready to start interviewing at the weekend. The end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. You are going to listen to a conversation between two students talking about a lecture they have just attended. First, look at questions 21 to 24. Henry, don't you think Dr. Adams' lecture was really very good? He could talk about the telephone directory and make it interesting. All his lectures are like that, Astrid. He's just one of those people. I wish we had him as our tutor. I bet you that he is very demanding, though. Boris is in his tutorial group and agrees that he is a brilliant lecturer, but he puts them under a lot of pressure. Hmm. But... Don't you think that's good? Perhaps. But I am glad to have Dr. Adams as a lecturer. He's interesting and rather funny and puts just the right amount of pressure on people. Did you take lots of notes in the lecture? Yes, actually I did. In fact, several pages. I didn't think I had taken so many. I was that busy listening to what was being said that I didn't take many notes. Can I photocopy yours? I don't think that's such a good idea. You won't be able to read my handwriting, and sometimes I write them in English and sometimes in Arabic. Oh, let's have a look. Wow, your notes are so neat. There's not much Arabic. There is on this page. Oh, yes, there is. Dr. Adams would be pleased to see this, especially given what he was talking about. Don't you keep careful notes? Mm, sometimes. It depends on the lecture. I don't think I'll forget Adams's lecture today, but some of the detail will fade. Before the conversation continues, look at questions 25 to 30.
I type up everything afterwards so you can have a copy then and you can fill in anything I have missed. I'm not so good on the broader concepts. I'm better when it comes to detail. Just what Adams was talking about. Well, I am definitely a detail person. I need to have everything written down before I can get the concepts clear in my head. And I am the complete opposite. I find all the detail clutters up my mind and I get very frustrated, which was just what he was on about. He mentioned a book he'd written. He mentioned several. The one on space and the individual? Yes, called My Space. It's on the book list. So it is. I think I'll get that out of the library or, or get my own copy. Did you get what he said about spatial awareness? I didn't, really. Oh, yes, it was fascinating. I can't be as eloquent as Adams was, but I know several people who are frighteningly intelligent, but they have difficulty reading simple directions, even when getting to places that they know very well. I find that difficult to understand. Everyone learns the way to walk to the shops and things like that. You mean just the way people learn spelling? You know people misspell words, make mistakes in countless areas of their lives, and going in the right direction is just the same. Remember what Adam said about the number of people who cannot tell left from right, north from south, and so on? Do you know which way is north? It's, um, that way. You see? I couldn't have told you that. Really? I haven't a clue which way is which. That's why I'm always getting lost when I go out on my bike and put me in a completely new place and I am totally lost. What about maps? I'm hopeless at reading them. But then you're brilliant at writing essays and getting all the ideas down in the right order and I don't know where to start. Again, just what Adams was talking about. What we need to do is combine our skills. You teach me to cope with detail, and I'll teach you how to string concepts together. OK, we can do that. Which way is the library? It's... Uh, you're making fun of me. <laughs> that is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. You are going to hear a talk about the English policeman. As you listen, complete the notes below. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. The English policeman has several nicknames, but the most frequently used are Copper and Bobby. The first name comes from the verb to cop, which is also slang, meaning to take or to capture. And the second comes from the first name of Sir Robert Peel, the 19th century politician who is the founder of the police force as we know it today. An early nickname for the policeman was Peeler, but this one has died out. Whatever we may call them, the general opinion of the police seems to be a favourable one, except, of course, among the criminal part of the community, where the police are given more derogatory nicknames, which originated in America, such as Fuzz or Pig. Visitors to England seem nearly always to be very impressed by the English police. It has, in fact, become a standing joke that the visitor to Britain, when asked for his views of the country, will always say, at some point or other, I think your policemen are wonderful. Well, the British Bobby may not always be wonderful, 
but he is usually a very friendly and helpful sort of character. A music hall song of some years ago was called If You Want to Know the Time, Ask a Policeman. Nowadays, most people own watches, but they still seem to find plenty of other questions to ask the policeman. In London, the policemen spend so much of their time directing visitors about the city that one wonders how they ever find time to do anything else. Two things are immediately noticeable to the stranger when he sees an English policeman for the first time. The first is that he does not carry a pistol, and the second is that he wears a very distinctive type of headgear, the policeman's helmet. His helmet, together with his height, enables an English policeman to be seen from a considerable distance, a fact that is not without its usefulness. From time to time it is suggested that the policeman should be given a pistol and that his helmet should be taken from him. But both these suggestions are resisted by the majority of the public and the police themselves. However, the police have not resisted all changes. Radios, police cars and even helicopters give them greater mobility now. The policeman's lot is not an enviable one, even in a country which prides itself on being reasonably law-abiding. But, on the whole, the English policeman fulfills his often thankless task with courtesy and good humour, and with an understanding of the fundamental fact that the police are the country's servants, and not its masters. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. So guys, don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. I'll update some recent exams for more updates related to recent IELTS exam writing as topics, listening, reading, practice test and speaking QCAT guesswork. Please guys participate in everyday new IELTS listening and reading practice tests to achieve your desired band score in your actual IELTS exam. For more IELTS material, visit my official website www.ielsupdatesandrecentexams.com The link is given below in the description. If you need PDF files of latest IELTS material, then please join my Telegram channel. So guys, please write your score below the comment section. Again, thanks for listening. God bless you all guys. Stay tuned. Stay safe. <laughs>